And welcome back to Open Line. Our topic tonight, women in the workforce. It's kind of a girl power night tonight, <laughs> talking about some of the struggles, challenges that women face in the workforce. But it's really not just about women, as we were talking during the commercial break. When you help women in need, you're really helping the community overall and, and society overall. Absolutely. There's so many of these policy solutions are really about helping women in Tennessee get in the workforce and stay in the workforce. And I think that's so much more yeah. of the work that you're doing, too. But so it, it is really true that when we do that, when we help women get in the workforce and stay in the workforce, society as a whole, all taxpayers benefit. Because we know that women, for instance, who have access to paid family and medical leave are 39% less likely to require public assistance. So really, we all benefit uh, when we're helping those moms. And Laura, you've been telling us about the Reconnect Cafe, so much you guys are doing at the Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, and you've got some opportunities coming up yes. uh, for some community training. Tell us a little more about that. So we have what we call the Reconnect Ambassador Program, and it's a neighborhood level um, sort of training on how to sort people in to the education system for adults. And so we go into neighborhoods. We've got three coming up. One um, at the Woodbine Community Organization, uh, one at Cathedral of Praise in North Nashville, and then one at um, Edge Hill United Methodist Church coming up in December. Um, and what we really do is we spend two hours talking about what it takes to get an adult back to school, how they can pay for it, and how they can support people in school with things like you know, child care, um, transportation help, um, connection to technology, that's a really big one that we sort of sometimes overlook. But if someone thinks that they can do an online class on a phone, that's just not possible. Or write a paper on a phone. And that's really how people, if you say, if you ask the question, are you connected to the internet, 95% of the people will say yes, and then they'll hold up their phone. But the real connection is, can you do research mm -hmm. to write a paper? Mm -hmm. Um, you could do that on your phone, but not very well. It would be a challenge, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would take <laughs> a lot longer a that way, yeah. <laughs> do you know how to use the technology? Mm -hmm. So there's lots of, we connect people to community resources, um, like Goodwill has classes in Google applications, and so they can do those online, whether they have, you know, you don't have to have Microsoft Office or um, any of those other programs. You can do them online as long as you have a web you know, web access. We connect them to the public libraries. So um, in these um, ambassador classes, we really teach people how to connect people. And, and really, people make a decision at the community level. If you're thinking of going back to school and you, are, you have a church home, you're going to talk about that with your church members. And so we want people to connect directly. Uh, we talk to community-based organizations, employers, um, that same employer that's coming into the cafe trained their entire recruiting staff as Reconnect Ambassadors. Because you have to know how to get people to the help, and that's part of that sorting in idea, um, no wrong door. Whether you're at work, at church, or at a community-based organization, you're going to be connected. And you said the cafe's been around since 2017. You must have had some incredible success stories. Do any come oh, to yeah. mind of just ones um, that really stand out in your mind of people that you've helped see yeah. go on to bigger and better things? We had one, um, two students actually who are graduating soon. They came in and talked to us a couple of weeks ago and just talked about their journey. And one, um, she's a mother. She Her video is actually on our Nashville Reconnect Facebook page. But um, she's a working mother. She works full-time. Um, and she takes care of her kids and gets them to school and she's studying to be a paralegal and she's doing all of this um, seemingly you know without any hiccups but she would tell you that she had plenty of hiccups and um, lots of self-doubt but she comes into the cafe regularly and um, another person he was at a, co a proprietary college that shut down he didn't know how he was going to get his transcripts and now he's also getting ready to graduate um, so it's really nice to see people sort of make it over that hump to where they're sort of cruising like they're not going to graduate for another whole semester but the difference in first semester to almost last semester in those students is just really amazing to see. It must be really inspiring when you talk to them and see how far oh, they've come. Definitely. And you have so many statistics here. I mean, so we're not many. even going to get to half of these. The and so many of them are surprising to me. I mean, yeah. what ones stand out to you when you're thinking, like, wow, people probably don't realize this, you I know? I really think it's that, you know, more than half of Tennessee families depend upon a female mm -hmm. breadwinner. Man, that's what I thought, too, yeah. when I read that. But that I have that for you. Right? Oh, I know, I know you've got lots. <laughs> but yeah. it's really, so like, what does breadwinner mean, right? Right, so it means that you're earning at least 40% of the family budget, or right, 40% of your family's intake okay. is earned by the woman. And what that means is if you lose 
40% of your overall family budget or more, you're going to have to make some really different financial decisions. So I think just knowing that, you know, Tennessee families as a whole, more than half of them are in part, you know, headed by women or mm -hmm. have female breadwinners uh, is, is really important when we understand the, the scope of this problem. I just, that surprised me. I don't know why that surprised me yeah. so much, but it's like, I wonder how long that's been the case, you know? I mean, has yeah. there been a shift in there or is that, has it been that way yeah, for years? Yeah, I mean, in, you know, so I'm not the expert on this, but I know that Tennessee's economy had a real uptick when women started going back to work in the 80s. Uh, and so since then, you see more and more women contributing to our state's economy. And just thinking about, you know, if we can get more and more women joining the workforce and then staying in it, what a huge impact that could have on our state's economy as a whole. And if they do run into issues, like you said, with some of these challenges with child care and whatnot, that's a huge hit uh, for them to have to juggle that. And it's a huge hit for women in particular. Mm -hmm. Because we know, for instance, when a family runs into, say, a child care, you can't find affordable, high quality child care, 94% of the folks in Tennessee who then decide, well, I'm going to um, take time off work. I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to move part time. 94% of the folks making that decision are women. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and typically, you know, that's because she's earning less. We also know that, you know, more women in Tennessee work in those low wage jobs that Laura's right. trying to transition people out of. Mm -hmm. More women than men hold those low wage jobs. And so they're often the ones who say, okay, I'm going to stay. I don't want to, but because I can't find high quality, affordable child care or because you know I don't get paid leave at my job or because I'm pregnant and I'm being forced to choose between my job and my unborn baby you know we see these women sort of dropping out of the workforce and mm -hmm. so just thinking about how great it would be for our state as a whole if we could allow them to stay in so what needs to be done <laughs> to yeah, try to solve I mean, that problem I think what's it's, the million dollar answer here right and the thing is you know there really isn't a silver bullet mm -hmm. there's all sorts of things I mean there's the on the ground grassroots work that's happening for sure. at the Nashville Chamber yeah. and other places. Uh, and then there's the big picture policy stuff at our cities and at our state level and of course at the national level too. Uh, but it's sort of you know, some cornucopia of state, local, federal policy solutions, and then the on the ground folks doing the hard work. Because you guys are doing so much, and by each one of those efforts, it has to pay off yeah. dividends. Well, and I think we have to approach it as a community. You know, it's not just, it's definitely not just the chamber doing this work. I mean, we're partnering with community based organizations like Martha O'Brien, churches like Cathedral mm -hmm. Praise and Mount Zion. So there are lots of people who are working on this every day, but our community has to sort people in. Um, and we can't have so many rules that people get sorted out. Um, if you don't qualify for this, you're going to have to move on to something else. We have to sort them in and give them what they need and what they qualify for because there are a lot of pockets of money and assistance around, but we have to, we have to make sure they're available. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's part of what we're trying to do is sort of shine a light on what's available and then coordinate access so that everyone gets sorted to the place that they need at that time. Because yeah, if you need help but you don't know where to turn, right. it's like your hands are tied. Right. Well, and then if someone um, sort of hits that point and um, I'm not from the South, but I hear people call it a come apart. But, <laughs> so when you're having a come apart and you don't know where to turn, then you're just going to stop going. And the consequences of that are so huge when it comes to going back to school. Um, a lot of times your tuition dollars have to be sent back to the government. And so that converts to a balance at the school. So the consequences of stopping are so great. Um, that we want people to keep going. And if they have to stop, we want them to stop the right way so that they don't lose their eligibility, that they mm -hmm. don't, you know. Um, so it really is, sometimes it's a very well-coordinated dance and sometimes a tripping dance <laughs> where you're just trying to make it to the finish line. Well, and then the other thing about the South, in my experience, is that people are very generous and they're yes. very wanting to help. I mean, I'm right. sure if you do, if you need the help and you know where to turn, there's right. going to be someone there that's, well, that's, that's going to want to get you on the right track. We are so lucky that if we ask so, you know, sometimes <laughs> it shows up and, um, you know, Nashville Grad is one of those programs. It's through the mayor's office and it's dedicated money that um, supports student, students with wraparound services who go to Nashville State. First time, full time students and they can be adults or um, you know, first time freshmen coming out of high school, but it's really coordinated case management, almost um, academic support, um, regular check-ins. 
and it's individualized to the person. So um, I think that's really sort of the beauty of the reconnect navigation services is that it's personalized. Um, everyone's puzzle looks different. And so identifying what those things are that someone needs and helping them put it together so that they're putting it together, they're building social capital while they're putting together the puzzle to go to school and finish. So if someone's watching right now and they're like, yeah, I, I've been thinking about it. I want to go back to school. I just don't know how to go about it. I'm kind of intimidated. You know, would starting with you guys be the best place or where, where yeah. would you direct them? Um, I would say to go to tnreconnect.gov. And it's, you know, it's pretty clear on the website how you can apply for the Reconnect grant and can talk to a navigator. Um, both of those are the best way to get in touch with the navigators. Or if you live in Nashville, you can go to the Nashville Reconnect Cafe at Nashville State. Um, there's three locations, uh, south, the Southeast Campus, East Davidson Campus, and then the main campus on Whitebridge Road. Um, just and talk to one of the navigators that's there. Okay, great. We're going to take yeah. a quick break and we will be back with more Open Line after this. Stay with us.